All right, welcome back. Hopefully you have had a little bit of a brain break or maybe it's the next class period, who knows? Uh, but either way, as you're starting this video, we are going to take all of the parts that we made in our last video and we are going to assemble them together. Now, as you're an inventor, you might see all of these parts down here in our pinned files. Quick note on the pinned files, if you happen to remove them from the list, do not fear they are still in your computer. All that we would need to do is open those files and go to the location where you saved them. So again, that should be under this PC. Now I've been doing them a little bit differently because my computer is not working right, but you can see that all of my files are still here. So don't panic. But we are gonna go ahead and start a new file type. Now we've got several new file types actually that we can make. We've just been making parts so far. We also have the ability to make assemblies, which is where we can assemble or put parts together. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on new assembly, or if you are still an inventor that looks like new assembly. And here in my assembly, I am going to place different components. When I click on place, it's gonna ask me to select my parts, so I'm going to navigate to where I saved them. And I'm going to grab my base and click open. Once I'm in here, I can go ahead and click anywhere to place, and I just need to place this one once. So I'll place it and then I'll hit escape. So now I've got my base. I'm gonna go ahead and place all of my parts and then we'll put them together. So let me place my peg. Now on our base, we have two holes and I don't know if you noticed it, but our pegs are actually the perfect size to fit in our holes. So we're going to place two of them. So all we do is click once, click twice. Then we're going to go ahead and grab our small gear, which was gear one. And then we're going to grab our large gear, which is gear two. Now, as we place them, you can see that we've got just shades of gray here. What might be super helpful, what I know is very helpful for me, is to change the way that I view these parts. So under the view menu here on the top, I'm going to change the visual style and I'm going to make it shaded with edges. What this does is it adds that black outline around it, which for me, I found is super helpful. If you are happy looking at it just as shaded, go for it. Uh, but shaded with edges is what I found helps me. Now, as we're doing this, we're going to put all our parts together, like we said. We do want for one part to be stationary, meaning it's not gonna move. And I'm gonna make that my base. If I click on my base, or more specifically, right click on my base, I get this whole menu that pops up. Now here in this menu, I'm going to make this a grounded part, which means it is going to stay. You can see it's got a little pin icon when I hover over it, and over here on my layers menu, it's got that little push pin as well. So now all of these other parts, I can click on them and move them around, but my base, I cannot. So that makes it a little bit easier for me. Now, in order to assemble the rest of my parts, I'm going to be using this tool right here, which is our constrain tool. When I click on my constrain tool, I've got several types of constraints that I can do, including assembly constraints, motion constraints, transitional constraint sets. We're gonna be hanging out mostly in assembly and motion. And with this, we do have mate constraints, so it lines things up on the same plane. We also have angle constraints, tangent constraints, insert constraints, and symmetry constraints. So a lot of options here. Our very first one, we're gonna stick with mate constraints. And actually, we're going to stick with this first option where we've got one surface facing one way, the other surface facing the other. So with this, we are clicking on surfaces. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and click on this surface of my base. I'm going to constrain the peg to the base. And specifically, I want this flat surface right here. You might have probably heard that nice little bop sound. So my peg is now constrained to my base. But I want it actually in the hole. So as I do this, I can go ahead and grab another constraint and constrain this hole right here. Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. 
to this hole right here. Now that was a little bit hard to see, so I'm gonna back it up and undo it, slash show us how we can do it the first time very intentionally. So from our right view right here. Uh, if I click on surfaces, like I said, it will constrain, but I can also click on these edges to constrain them as well. So clicking on this edge right here and this edge right here. So close. There we go. Awesome. So now that peg is fully inserted into that hole. So we are good to go. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for the other one. And you'll notice I will click apply in between each constraint so that I'm constraining one thing at a time. So I can constrain that surface, do do, and then I can constrain my specific lines. There we go. Okay. Now with this, I will always encourage a lot, a lot, a lot of patience. I've had a lot of practice with this and sometimes I still struggle and that is okay. The more you practice with this, the better you will get. And I just want you to remember that. Also remember that there is a literal undo button, control Z and also right up here. So if something doesn't work the first time, undo, try again. We got plenty of time. Now, as far as our gears go, we are going to wind up placing them right over those pegs so that they can fit together. Now let's try playing with a different type of constraint. Let's try playing with our insert constraint and let's insert this surface right here into that surface right there. And again, over here, we are going to insert this surface right here into that surface right there. Awesome. Now, as we look at our gears, they are assembled to our base, but something funky that is happening is that our gears are not lined up. So the really cool thing is that now that they are constrained, I can actually turn the gears and they will rotate. So you can see I'm clicking and dragging and turning this gear and clicking and dragging and turning this gear. But if we know anything about gears, when one of them turns, the whole point of gears is that the other turns as a response. So really cool, we have a constraint for that too. This is called our motion constraint, and they are going to be moving as rotations, and they're actually gonna be moving as reverse rotations. So when one gear turns, the other gear is gonna turn in the opposite direction. So I can go ahead and select my first gear, and then my second, and then I can apply. Now with this, when I turn, you can see there's still some overlap that's happening, but how cool is that? As I turn one gear, the other gear turns in response. Now to fix this overlap, let's actually go ahead and let's look in our gears. You can see that we have that rotation constraint. If I were to edit this rotation constraint, so I double click on it, it asks me to change a dimension, which is actually a ratio for how much it turns at one point in time. So with this, let me actually just delete this first, get these all lined up so they fit nicely with each other. Try to get them as lined up as you can and we'll reconstrain them. So that ratio is right here. So the UL, that's our ratio. Now the ratio has to do with how big or small the gears are in relation to each other. So that ratio was a one ratio, which means it thinks that the gears are the same size. In reality, we have one gear that has twice as many teeth as the other because our big gear has 32 and our little gear has one. 
So if we click on our little gear, we click on our big gear, and we change the ratio to two, we can apply it, and now we can see that our gears are turning at a much different speed, not the correct one. So let's go ahead, let's change that ratio. Let's change it to 0.5 because the small gear is half as big as the big gear. So now you can see as it turns, those teeth fit really nicely inside of each other. There is a little tiny bit of overlap as they go around, but it's not nearly as bad, and they are now turning at the same rate, accounting for their diameter and how many teeth they have. So y'all, that is some of the really cool functions. Those are some of the really cool functions that Inventor has, um, making those assemblies and mimicking that motion. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take this assembly and we are going to turn it in as a drawing. So with this, first things first, please go ahead and save it. And I want you to name this one your last name underscore assembly. Save. Now I'm gonna go ahead and open up one final new thing. Uh, and it's specifically, sorry, not place, it's going to be a new drawing. With this, we can use a template that is A-OK. -okay. You can also just click on Use Drawing, and it's gonna open up this sheet right here. This is a sheet that's really great for us to export as a PDF or great for us to print so that we can have a paper copy. And we are going to bring in our base which is the object that we are creating a drawing of. Now, in theory, it should grab our most recently saved file, which should be our assembly that we just created. So we should see that thing right here. Now, as we go around, I'm currently actually looking at the back view, even though it says front, because I'm looking at the back of the pegs, the back of the base, and the back of the gears. So I can use this little navigation cube to switch that around so I can see both of the gears just like that. If this is considered our front view, we do also need to add a top view. So this little arrow right here, I can click on it and it will project a top view up here. I will do the same thing to get a side view and the same thing to get a isometric view. So we've got our top front and side that makes our orthographic projection and then our isometric. We're doing all of that before we hit the OK. We're also gonna change our scale. So a one-to-one -one scale means that we still have a lot of room on our paper. So let's make this a three-to-one scale so that it is about three times as large. Now with this, we are able to move around our shapes and you will see as I move one view, the other three follow me so that we are always having our standard view alignment. I'm also gonna change our style real fast just so that we can see hidden lines so we can play around with changing our style and seeing how that affects us. I do want to have the hidden lines on there. And when I click OK, we now can see all of those hidden lines. So y'all, this right here is our final thing. Um, the last couple of changes that we're going to make, it should say under drawn here, it should say your student ID number. It should also say the date that you made it. You'll see I'm making this on a Friday. And as we save it, we are going to go ahead and do file and save. So we can do Marshall drawing. But then I also want you to do file export and we are going to export this as a PDF. This way you can turn it into me in Schoology and I can start grading your very first manufacturing project. From here, you are going to go on and actually build this gear assembly. So you are going to build the gears, build the base, build the pegs. There are some further videos as well as some notes and tips and instructions on how you will build those things. But long story short, we are using the 3D printer, the laser, the CNC, and a bunch of the tools in the lab. Thank you so much for your patience. You did a great job.